Hi, uh, my name is Chris, and on behalf of my group, consisting of myself, uh, Charles Cardella Rainfray, and uh, Jose Valdez, we're going to be talking to you about MIDI and OSC message structure, uh, its anatomy, and how that applies to uh, electroacoustic uh, music setting, and what considerations to take if you're going to be using these protocols uh, in your work. Uh, so, what are MIDI and OSC? Uh, essentially, they're both protocols, which means they don't generate sound on their own. Uh, but there are a set of instructions, rules, and grammar guidelines uh, with which to create and generate sounds digitally. So let's look at the MIDI messages. Uh, MIDI messages are always in byte format. So a byte is a package of eight bits. And a bit is the smallest unit of digital data, which is either a one or a zero, or an on or off. Uh, so in the case of MIDI, MIDI is serial, which means that each byte, each message, needs to come one after the other in a very specific order. Uh, and usually those are headed by the status byte, uh, which is a byte containing a one at its leftmost uh, bit. And I think of the status byte as kind of like a conductor on a train. So there's a train uh, of consecutive MIDI messages, and the status byte uh, comes first, has the manifest for the cargo, and then what comes after the actual content of the message are the data bytes, uh, which is prefaced with a zero at its leftmost bit. So OSC messages uh, also come in packets, uh, but they are not necessarily serially transmitted. Uh, so they can come in bundles, they can be sent in tandem, uh, in parallel, etc. And inside these packets, you can have an OSC message, or you can have a bundle, uh, which is just a, what you would think, a bundle of messages, or it could also contain bundles of bundles of bundles, etc. ad infinitum. Uh, now, the format of an OSC message uh, is essentially three-tiered. So it's got an address pattern, um, a type tag string, and a series of arguments. Now, the address pattern, uh, it's called such because it's modeled after web addresses, uh, and it's designed to be more human-readable, so to speak, than MIDI. So in the case where a lot of people uh, find that they have trouble deciphering um, hexadecimal or binary uh, byte data from MIDI. In the case of OSC, um, you use strings of English language characters. Uh, so the syntax is of these uh, address types are forward slash followed by a string of characters. Uh, and those could be defined by you or uh, the programmer programming an application OSC ready. Now the type tag string follows, uh, and it's usually a comma with a string of letters, but these represent the following data types that are going to be used in the uh, arguments. Excuse me. Um, so those could be uh, either integer, uh, which is a whole number, uh, float, which is a decimal number, so like 0 0.5, let's say, uh, a string, which is a chain of characters, as I'd mentioned earlier, and a blob, OSC blobs, uh, which is an arbitrary block of binary data. Now, the arguments are sort of like MIDI data bytes. Uh, so they are kind of the meat of the message. Uh, they're what you're trying to send, uh, value, data, parameters, uh, the content itself. Uh, and they're sets of bytes uh, representing, so they're digital uh, bytes, again, but they're representing these different data types that we discussed earlier, like integers, strings, etc. cetera. Uh, so to go into a few more com useful comparisons, uh, MIDI was created in 1983. Uh, OSC uh, was created in 2002 and sort of refined between 2002 and 2004. Uh, the data form in MIDI is compact binary, so those are the bytes and uh, bit packages we talked about earlier. And OSC is bits, is also digital data, but those represent integers, strings, floats, etc. Uh, MIDI is transmitted, again, serially. So uh, to drive that home, it's one after the other uh, in a very specific order. OSC comes in those packets, bundles, could be in parallel, etc. Uh, in the case of MIDI, the MIDI specifications outline a lot of standards for the types, uh, the methods of transmission. Uh, so that could be a MIDI cable, which a lot of you are familiar with. Um, or it could be a USB, it could be a virtual connection. And in the case of OSC, it's designed for networks, uh, so that could be over Wi-Fi or Ethernet. But the thing to remember is both of these are just data protocols. So you could send MIDI or OSC messages anywhere that digital data could be sent. Uh, transmission speed uh, for both is dependent, again, on the method that you're using. Uh, in MIDI, for example, it could be 31,250 bits, ons or offs, uh, in a second. Uh, but that is defined for using MIDI cables and the circuits uh, used in those devices that are MIDI compatible using those cables. Um, same thing with OSC. It's very dependent. Uh, MIDI may be a bit faster, say, uh, than OSC, 
sending similar messages uh, if they're both sent over, say, Ethernet. Uh, that could be caused because of the fact that media messages uh, are compact, digitally speaking, uh, in their small bit format, but OSC messages take up a lot more bytes. Uh, predefined. Now, this one's part's important. Um, do, do they have predefined messages? So is there a set of messages in their specification uh, that are predefined? Media, yes, most of the messages uh, in the media specification are predefined. By definition, uh, it was designed to be a standard. So there needs to be this set of predefined messages which any media compatible device uh, can understand, can parse, can handle. Um, so that's the idea behind media. But with OC OSC, it was designed a bit differently. Uh, to be a bit more open-ended and flexible, and there's technically no predefined messages in OSC. Those are defined by the user or the programmer uh, who's implementing OSC. And interoperability means how easy is it to use a wide range of devices with these protocols. So with MIDI, pretty easy because most uh, devices, many musical, digital-capable devices, um, use MIDI as a standard. That's how it was designed. Um, and it's been pretty robust and stood the test of time. With OSC, it's still pretty limited. There are more uh, software and hardware uh, applications of OSC. Um, but even still, there takes a bit of programming. You have to make sure that your OSC client and server, the things that are sending and receiving, uh, both understand how to use the different messages. And the resolution, as mentioned, uh, the resolution of um, MIDI messages are uh, bytes that represent either 0 uh, to 127, uh, values in between, but they're always going to be integers. Um, whereas in OSC, uh, it's limited only by the data types that you're going to be using uh, in your arguments. So uh, with MIDI, the data bytes always contain 0 to 127, and there's a limit there. Uh, but in OSC, you could have a number between 0 and 1. Uh, you could have 0 0.5. You could have a wide range, 22 to 2,000 or so. Uh, and that's dependent on what types of arguments you want to send. Uh, and the last sort of factor, as sort of mentioned before, uh, human readable. So uh, in MIDI's case, uh, we say no because a lot of people have trouble deciphering uh, without a lot of extra knowledge how to read um, bits and bytes in binary data, if be it in binary or in hexadecimal. With OSC, it's designed with its address pattern format uh, to be easily readable at first glance uh, and programmable, so um, you can you know, easily decipher what's going on with the messages. Now, uh, I'm just going to give a few examples quickly of uh, possible considerations to make when you're going to try to apply one of these protocols or both uh, to your creative uh, applications. So for example, are you using commercial hardware synths uh, or DAWs? Uh, and are you limiting yourself to, say, the 12-tone um, scales? Uh, then in that case, you might want to use, well, you probably want to use MIDI uh, because it, uh, like I said earlier, it's the standard. Uh, most of these devices, hardware and software, use it. Um, are you going to use Max Super Collider or C Sound? And in those cases, are you going to use parameters or gestures uh, which you want a bit more fine control uh, over the resolution of those? Uh, in th in that case, you might want to use OSC. Uh, but if you're going to interface those languages with a hardware uh, synth or a DAW, then you might end up using MIDI or both, bridging the two. Uh, are you going to use, say, an Arduino uh, board and connect sensors to it uh, to create gesture-based music? And uh, is that going to be interfaced with something like Max? Well, in that case, where you're already doing some of your own programming, it might be a bit easier to handle the address pattern format of OSC uh, than the byte data of uh, MIDI. And in other cases, you may want to have very sort of flexible control um, over what parameters you're using that you may not be able to get with the predefined messages of MIDI. So that's a possibility where you might use OSC as well. So these are just a few of the considerations you could use uh, when thinking about using one or both of those protocols uh, in your creative work as an electroacoustic musician. Thank you.